Jeff with Linco Diesel Performance here for a Tech Tip Tuesday. Uh, what we've got for this week, this is our first ever Tech Tip Tuesday, and I chose to do a Tech Tip video showing how to properly use the uh, tapered piston installers. Uh, the reason I chose it for the first one, it's a frequently asked question. Uh, we get comments, we get phone calls, emails from vendors of ours, customers, uh, and just followers asking, hey man, you know, I see you guys use them all the time. Um, I haven't had good luck, or maybe it's something I'm doing wrong. How do you use them? So a lot of people have said that they haven't had good luck with them, basically. They work great. We use them on all of our engine builds. As you can see, I got a wall here of all the common diesel sizes I keep right here handy. And then we've got a wall over there. We've got a whole bunch of them. We've got a huge uh, bore range of them. So they're great. They work better than uh, any you know old uh, ring installer, but you got to use them right like anything. And nobody showed me how to use them necessarily. I just figured out a trick that works well. Um, so we thought, well, hell, why not share it on the first ever Tech Tip Tuesday? So again, we are working on a Darmax here, and we're going to show how to use the uh, tapered piston installer. We use the ones from ARP because we're diesel guys, and they make them, um, and they're very good quality, the ones from ARP. So that's primarily what we use. So one key thing, make sure you're in the right hole for one. <laughs> but so the way I would start, I want to make sure that my rings are oriented right, which I already, I always have them set up ahead of time. But I always give them one last check to make sure that my rings are oriented the way that I want them. I make sure they float. Even though I've already checked that, I always make sure they float good. And I come over here, and I think where people go wrong is you kind of do this bass backwards. So I start with the piston facing down. I've got several clean uh, shop tiles stacked up, and I set it face down. You take your installer, which is coated with clean engine oil and you slide it over from the bottom up as it would be going in the cylinder start it on the skirt and i normally stop right about the time you get to the heel of the skirt there so that you can rest your rod and here's where the important part is so i think where people go wrong you know the rings uh have a huge uh difference in um diameter expanded versus when they're installed so i think where people go wrong is they're trying to force the piston in and your rings could be you know three sixteenths of an inch one way or the other so the key factor is get your rings centered when i say centered we eyeball them but get your rings centered on the piston so I, I always make sure the oil control ring and my second ring are centered slide the piston installer down by hand Okay, when you get down to your top ring, if you had them centered and it's going on right, it should come down to the top ring and be, uh, you know, pretty well flush all the way around. And you can see it's closer on this side than it is in this side. So that means it's not, the rings weren't centered and it's got the installer off a little bit. So I will always back up. Make sure it's nice and loose like that. You know, you don't have a ring pinched. And then I'll work it back down. I kind of felt the ring there pop in place good. And now I'm much better looking. Or at least my piston is. So at this point, I make sure that my top ring is centered. Give it a look all the way around and push down. And you see how easy that went down? That's how it should be. Pick it up. Look around here. Pretty dang center. You know it's installed right. So now, you know, we, we use the little uh, boots from Clevite, and I cut some bolts off. A Duramax uh, works really good. So if, however you're doing your guides, make sure they're ready. Another key thing is make sure whoever's doing your machine work, if you're not doing it yourself, if you're having machine shop do your machine work, make sure they're tapering the top of the cylinder or you, no matter what kind of piston stall, you'll have problems. So we got our piston lined up. You notice how I set it in there. Give it one push here to make sure it's seated against the block, which you probably couldn't tell in the video, but it did not move at all. So I then you know even more that you had it nice and square in your piston. So at this point, you see I have my piston installer here, or piston knocker, everybody calls them. Shouldn't need it. 
when you use these properly and you take the steps that I showed you, you should push in by hand. Boom. That is how these should work. That easy. If you if you do drive them in with you know a rubber mallet or a proper piston installer, there's nothing wrong with that. But when these are used properly, it goes in that easy. And you ain't putting a piston in with an old you know conventional clamp-on style uh, piston installer that easy. So that is the advantage of these. There's no way you've got a ring um, out of the land or you know that you're gonna break when it goes in that easy. So these are great. Um, sometimes Cummins, uh, the second ring is a little tight on them and they may or may not push in. 50-50 on a Cummins uh, where they push in easy, but you can always get that old control ring lined up, pushed in there. And then, you know, if it's too hard to push with your thumbs or you don't want to risk lifting it up, knock them in there. But that is how they should work. So again, the reason we chose this for the first Tech Tip Tuesday was we've had a lot of people ask about that. So we hope this helps. Uh, the reason we're doing this Tech Tip Tuesday is to help people in the industry, whether it is a professional engine builder or a guy building an engine in his garage, transmission builders, uh, diesel techs, whatever. Anything that we're doing, whether it's in the engine room, in the transmission room, or out in our shop, uh, if, it's, if it's something we think's worthy of sharing, we're gonna do a video on it. So when we're doing these videos, they're not staged. This is stuff we're doing every day in our normal environment, just like you are. Uh, so if we think it's worthy, we'll holler at Sean, the man behind the camera there, and we'll do a video. So if at any time, if you have any comments about anything or questions, uh, feel free to shoot us a message on social media, call us, or you can always email me direct, jeff at lencodieselperformance.com, all spelled out, and we'll gladly help you. Uh, if you have an idea, if there's something that you fight, if you're a guy at tech in a shop or a shop owner or something you're always fighting commonly, let us know. We might already have a solution or maybe something we'll look into. So again, if you have any ideas, let us know. Uh, this is something we look forward to doing and we hope it helps people out. So something else I did want to point out on, you know, putting piston in. So if you notice down here, I've got my fueler gauge laying there for checking rod side clearance. That's a good idea. I mean, you should always be checking that, but it's just, it's a good idea. Something I think about, have it ready, have it handy. When I knock number four in, I'll torque them and I'll check it immediately and it's done. I can go back and document it later. I keep a uh, 10 to 12 step fueler gauge for uh, Duramax. I usually use a six to eight on a Cummins, but keep that handy because like I said, you can be checking anyway and it's a good time when you've got the, uh, the crank throw all the way down and it's easy to get to. You torque it, you check it real quick. So I think that's all I got for this week. Um, some of these videos will be short and sweet, something real quick, some will be longer. Uh, here in the next couple of weeks, we are going to do a uh, degreening camshaft and checking valve the piston. That'll be a very lengthy one, but it'll be very informative. I think a lot of diesel guys are really gonna like that and learn a lot from it. So that'll probably be four to six weeks from now, I'd say middle of January. We'll have that one. So uh, definitely keep an eye out for that. But every week we'll try to do something informative. Thank you.